Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. I wanted to do an artist spotlight video on the singer and songwriter, Neo. At one point, Neil was one of the biggest R&B male singers in the industry, and he was one of the most sought after songwriters. But the question is, what happened to Neil's popularity? And what is he doing now? Before we get into that, I wanna start by talking about Neil's career because he did have a lot of hits, and he also had a lot of success in a short period of time. However, his rise to stardom wasn't exactly an easy journey. Before Neo went solo, he started off in a singing group called MB. The group MB did showcase their talent on Apollo, but unfortunately for them, their performance did not turn out too well. In fact, Neo and his group were booed. Check it out. The group Envy did not last for obvious reasons, but Neo still had a star quality about him that attracted Columbia Records. Neo signed his first deal to Columbia, but unfortunately that record deal did not work out. He was dissatisfied with the way the record label tried to market him, and he didn't like the songs that they wanted him to sing. He wanted to write his own songs, however, when he requested to write his music, it didn't turn out too well. So I go to my A&Rs and I'm like, yo, um, would it be cool, would it be cool, I'm asking permission at this point, would it be cool for me to record a few more songs that are kinda more in the vein of, of me? And they're like, well, you could, but your budget is depleted. Whenever an A&R offers to take you to dinner, know that it's on you. I had no idea that the money on that car was my budget, my recording budget. And they're like, well, there's nothing you could do. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, there is. I'm not, I'm not promoting this album. This is not me. I'm not doing this. And they're like, well, okay, so if you're choosing not to promote the album, then I guess you're just gonna sit on the shelf. And that's exactly what happened. Neil's album was never released, and he was dropped by his label. But there was one good thing that came out of it. He wrote a song called That Girl, which ended up going to the artist Marcus Houston. This song did help Neo get recognized as a songwriter and it opened up more doors for him to write songs for other artists. One of the songs he wrote ended up becoming a smash hit and it was the song Let Me Love You. Let Me Love You was written for the singer Mario. The song ended up being number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts for 10 weeks. It was also the platinum selling single that became Mario's biggest hit to date. This song solidified Neil as a hit maker. Fortunately, Neil was able to sign another record deal, and this time it was with Def Jam Records. From there, he recorded his first album on the label and released four hit songs, including his debut song, Stay, and three other hit singles like When You're Mad, Sexy Love, and his biggest hit on the album, So Sick. Make me think about the smile Having my first child I'm letting go Turning off the radio Cause I'm so sick of the song So tired of tears Neo released his album In My Own Words in 2006 and the album debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 200 charts and it went on to sell over 1 million copies in the US alone. After the release of his successful debut album, Neil became one of the new big R&B stars on the scene. Neil did have some comparisons to people like Usher who had an astounding amount of success in the early 2000s. In a lot of ways, Usher opened the door for R&B artists like Neil. Neil was also competing with some of his peers like Chris Brown and Trey Songz. Chris Brown was a young, vibrant performer with a fresh sound, and he appealed to the younger audience. Trey Songz was more of a soulful crooner who had a street edge. Even though Neil was competing in the same genre as them, he was still able to shine on his own. He had his own musical sound that was somewhat reminiscent of his inspirations like Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. And he had a suave style that appealed to mature audiences. He especially appealed to the female audience because he was able to write from a female perspective. He also wrote amazing love songs. In a way, he was kind of like the new school babyface. 
and he was a highly sought after songwriter in the industry. He wrote songs for many artists, including Mary J. Blige, Janet Jackson, Celine Dion, and Jennifer Hudson. In fact, he wrote Jennifer Hudson's hit song, Spotlight. He also wrote for artists like Carrie Hilson and Chrisette Michelle. He wrote Carrie Hilson's hit song, Pretty Girl Rock, and he wrote most of the songs on Chrisette Michelle's Epiphany album. He additionally penned another hit song called Walk Away for the artist Paula Deanda. In addition to writing hit songs, Neil collaborated with several hip hop artists and he wrote hooks on songs like Make Me Better with Fabulous, Back Like That with Ghostface Killa, and Baby By Me with 50 Cent. Neil also got to collaborate with other singers and songwriters. He collaborated with Mariah Carey on her song Angels Cry, and he also collaborated with Carrie Hilson and Kanye West on their smash hit song Love Knocks You Down. He additionally collaborated with Celine Dion on their song Incredible. Neil was responsible for creating a lot of hit songs in the 2000s, but some of his biggest hit songs were with the artist Rihanna. Neil and Rihanna had a good working relationship and he oftentimes wrote from her perspective. He wrote her a ballad called Unfaithful, which would be one of the hit songs from her second album, A Girl Like Me. Neil was also responsible for writing several songs on her very successful album, Good Girl Gone Bad. He penned two of the hit singles from that album, one of them being his duet with Rihanna called Hate That I Love You, and the other one being Take A Bow. Take A Bow was one of the biggest hits he wrote for Rihanna, and it peaked to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. He also wrote a couple of songs from her album Rated R, including her single Russian Roulette. Neil did not only pin some of his biggest hits for Rihanna, but he also pinned a massive hit for Beyonce. The song he wrote for Beyonce was called Irreplaceable. Irreplaceable was one of Beyonce's most successful singles, and it was number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts for 10 weeks straight. One of the interesting things about Irreplaceable was it wasn't originally intended for Beyonce. Neil actually wrote Irreplaceable for himself. The song was inspired by his aunt's messy relationship and he wrote it from a male perspective. But then he realized how the song might translate to his female audience. He decided that it wasn't a good idea for him to sing a song like that. So he shopped it around to other female singers. So that's when I decided, okay, a female needs to sing this song. And Beyonce was not the first choice. She was not the first person that the song went to. It went to literally five other artists who all turned it down before Beyonce touched it. It was clear that the song was meant for Beyonce, and when Beyonce touched it, it became a multi-platinum selling single. But there was a little bit of controversy surrounding the song, and the controversy was over who actually wrote it. When Beyonce used to perform Irreplaceable, she would always say that she wrote the song, even though Neil was the one who wrote it. This is a brand new song up of my new album. I wrote this for all of the women out there. Beyonce was called out for taking credit for the song that she did not write. However, Neil said he did give her credit for arranging the background vocals. If you listen to my version of Irreplaceable and listen to Beyonce's version of Irreplaceable, it's two damn totally different songs with all the harmonies and extra stuff that she put in there. So yeah, I gave her writer's credit because that counts, that's writing. Irreplaceable wasn't the only song Neil wrote for Beyonce. He also wrote Flaws and All and her song with Jay-Z called Hollywood. In 2007, Neil released his second album, Because of You. The album had hit songs like Because of You, Can We Chill, Do You, and Go On Girl, which was almost like a remix of Irreplaceable. Because of You became Neil's second number one album, and it also sold over one million records in the United States alone. To top it off, he won a Grammy for having the best contemporary R&B album. His third album, Year of the Gentleman, was also a huge success. He had hit songs like the up-tempo dance track, Closer, and other singles like Mad, and of course his biggest single, Miss Independent. Miss Independent won him two Grammys for Best R&B Song and Best Male R&B Vocal Performance. Neil was on the roll and he became a hit making machine. Everybody in the industry wanted a hit song from Neil, even Disney. 
Neil was recruited by Disney to pin a song for the animated movie Princess Tiana. In 2010, he released his fourth album, Libra Skill. Libra Skill had singles like One in a Million, Champagne Life, and Beautiful Monster. Neil also did a dance tribute to one of his favorite singers, Michael Jackson, in his video One in a Million. Neil was actually supposed to work with Michael Jackson, but the project never came into fruition because of Michael Jackson's untimely passing. So Neil kept the songs he worked on for Michael to himself, and he continued to release music. Neil did have a lot of success in a short period of time. However, his hit-making streak started to slow down. Music was changing around the 2010s, and R&B music was no longer the wave. Dance music from the UK started to take over the US, and everybody was trying to do up-tempo electro-pop dance music. Neil even experimented with dance music when he released his album Red. His album Red was a disappointment to his core R&B fan base, and it did not achieve the same success as his other albums. But he still managed to get a top 10 song on the Billboard Hot 100 charts with his song Let Me Love You Until You Learn to Love Yourself. Neil was also a part of some pretty big dance hits like David Guetta's song Play Hard and Pitbull's controversial song Give Me Everything. He also did another collaboration with Pitbull called Time of Our Lives. Although dance music was putting money in Neil's pockets, it wasn't what his core R&B fan base wanted to hear. In 2014, Neil released an album called Nonfiction. And in this album, he went back to his R&B and pop roots. And he had a moderately successful hit called She Knows. A big transition that happened in Neil's career was his departure from Def Jam to Motown. Neil left Def Jam Records to become an executive at Motown, and he also brought his compound entertainment imprint over to Motown. With this new position, Neil did step away from making his own music for a while, but in 2018, he did release his album, Good Man. Good Man was a good album, but it didn't have the same reach as his previous albums. Neil's popularity definitely wasn't the same, but like most singers, they had their peak and they plateau and eventually fall off. During the height of his fame, Neil didn't have any outrageous scandals. People did oftentimes question his sexuality, but that didn't really affect him. Also, he was arrested for reckless driving and not having a license, and when his mugshot hit the internet, people did clown his head. Those instances didn't really affect him that much, but he was affected by his relationship drama. There was some drama in Neil's personal life that did make a lot of his fans look at him a certain way. And it was the drama involving his ex, Monetta Shaw, and his wife, Crystal Smith. Before getting with Crystal, Neil was engaged to Monetta, and he had two children with her. However, headlines came out that Neil made Monetta tie her tubes so she wouldn't have any more kids. Those headlines were a little bit exaggerated, but Monetta did reveal on the reality show Atlanta X's that she actually burned her tubes because she and Neil agreed to not have any more children. Monetta agreed to do this because she thought that Neil was going to stay around. However, Neil didn't stay around. He moved on from Monetta and started dating another woman named Crystal. Then he married her and had more children with her. When this came out on the blogs, a lot of Neil's fans started to look at him in a negative light. Neil and Monetta both had to come out and explain what happened to clear up any misconceptions. Yeah. And then he asked you to get your uh, tube tie. No, he didn't ask. We just decided as at a as a family to do it. That we both we had a girl and a boy. We didn't want any more kids. Mm. So okay, we're gonna do it because we're gonna be together for forever. <laughs> you know, um, life happened, and I made a decision uh, that if I would have known the outcome of it, I definitely wouldn't have. Mm. You so, know, so was the decision mm -hmm. to tie your tubes mm -hmm. because you believe that was forever? Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Like otherwise, I would not have like ever. And then mm -hmm. forever was over. Yeah. You didn't want to burn the whole world down? Of course. How long did it take for you to get over that hurt and that pain? It took a while. Yeah. Like, what's a while? Maybe like 
um, maybe two years, honestly. Damn. Yeah. So it was a lot to have kids by this man, you know, and I thought it was forever, you know. So no, I did not force anybody to tie or burn no tubes. That is not right. how it happened. Okay. We had a boy. No, we had a girl first. Then we had a boy. When we found out it was a boy, we was high fiving in the doctor's office. Yeah, yeah. we done. Yeah, said, we done. Yeah, we done. All right, cool. We done. So as they were pulling our son out of her. The doctor says, hey, while I'm down here, you want me to go ahead and get take care of these tubes? Right. She looked at me. I looked at her. She did this. I did this. She said, go ahead. What am I supposed to do? What am I going to do? I right. can't. Again, I don't force people to do anything. I'm not the person that imposes my will on nobody. And that was not the case there. Now, I will say that she didn't say that I forced her to tie her tubes. Right. Mm. To clear it up. <laughs> no, I did not force Monietta Shaw to tie her yeah. tubes and then leave her. I did not mean Monietta did not break up. I didn't meet Crystal until a year later. Yeah. Okay. So everybody that was hating me for that, you ain't got to hate me no more. Yay, yay. I did. <laughs> After Neil moved on from Monietta, he did get some criticism for his relationship with Crystal. Crystal made some comments that made people side eye her, including some comments that she made about her son not being blessed with her Hawaiian silky hair. When Crystal tried to explain what she meant, she did get even more backlash and Neil attempted to defend his wife. Why, why do you think people were so critical of it then? Like Because they, they assume that I'm not mixed with black, which I absolutely am, and they don't like black men being with white women or other racial women. And it's just really stupid, so I don't get into the stereotypes. I will check you, but I'm learning to do better at that, so. It is what it is. But you like your baby's hair. Even I love my child's so, hair, but yeah. I want his hair to have moisture in it. I don't penalize me for trying to do something right for my child. Yeah. If you want to say like your child have dry hair, then you go ahead and do that. I, however, I'm a mother that's not going to do that. Now your wife got a lot of flack for talking about your son's hair. Yeah, yeah. You said your, your, your son's hair wasn't like mommy's silky hair. What, what did you think about that? Because people take everything literally now. I didn't care. I didn't care. It's true. Little dude hair is dry. And, and she's a new mom and she ain't know what to do about it. So she got online and was asking people, what I, what should I do with his dry ass hair? Is it, my hair ain't dry, so I don't know what to do about it. And I just feel like people got people got real sensitive for no reason. It's black people, period. We get real sensitive about stuff. And it's like like y'all it's like y'all just wanna fight. Like I don't I don't get that. I don't understand that. Like we so quick to just tear something down. Like it's again, it just speaks to the world we live in right now. So you hate black people is what you're telling me this morning. <laughs> Despite some of the drama involving his ex and his wife, Neil was still able to keep the peace by getting them all on one accord. Now they're a happy, blended family. As far as his career is concerned, Neil did manage to keep himself busy doing other things. He starred in NBC's popular telecast, The Wiz, which was a remake of the famous Broadway play and movie. That was one of his more notable acting roles since his small role in Stomp the Yard. Also, he's a judge on the dance competition show, The World of Dance. Even though you don't hear much of Neil's new music spinning on the radio, he is still very much respected for being a great songwriter and being the mastermind behind some of the greatest hits in the 2000s. And if he wanted to, he could easily pin another hit. But right now, he's enjoying the fruits of his labor and collecting those royalty checks. <laughs> Anyway, that concludes this brief artist spotlight video on Neo. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.